Hello, my name is Lovie Ekpen Young. I'm a medical doctor and I live in the United Kingdom. I want to describe and share a novel therapy I have recently discovered which rapidly relieves life-threatening breathing difficulties experienced by individuals with COVID-19 infections. These breathing difficulties vary from early stage sore throats and persistent dry cough and progress in later stages to worsening difficulty in breathing, crushing chest pain and tightness in the chest, which is caused by the spreading and diffuse bronchopneumonia developing in the lungs. Without support and assistance, these changes eventually result in respiratory distress syndrome and failure of the respiratory and vital organs like the heart and death. Restoring the ability to breathe will halt the severe morbidity and mortality of the patients and will enable the immune system of the patients fight off the residue of the viral infection in the body. This procedure can be self-administered or performed with assistance from another person in different settings, such as at home, in care settings, in accident and emergency departments in hospital, as well as in the critical and intensive care units. This procedure can be performed at any stage of the disease where it's involving the upper and lower respiratory tracts, from the sore throat stage to the advanced stages of respiratory distress. In this way, it will prevent the worsening of the symptoms of breathlessness, as well as resolve the inflammation in the lungs. This involves the brisk massage of the skin overlying the chest wall and back with damp, steamy towels soaked in hypertonic saline, which in simple terms means a solution of concentrated salt, cooking salt, which is sodium chloride in water. The massage should extend from the anterior to the posterior chest wall as well as to parts of the body such as the front and the back of the neck the face and the scalp the bilateral upper arms and the armpits and the upper abdomen this will enable diversion of blood away from the chest wall overlying the lungs The temperature of the salt water within the massage pad or towel should be about 75 to 100 degrees centigrade. It must be very hot to touch. As you are aware, the skin is the largest organ in the body with the largest surface area supplied by blood supply with the capillaries in the dermis. Paradoxically, the hypertonic salt solution maintains the integrity of the skin and prevents the development of blisters and burn injuries within the skin following this procedure. If you use hot water on its own without any salt, burn injuries will certainly result. Utilizing moist heat at high temperatures will cause extensive vasodilatation of the skin capillaries and this leads to opening of a visions and diversion and migration of blood from inflamed congested alveoli and the bronchial tree to the capillaries within the skin. The result of this is the reversal of the stasis in the alveoli capillaries which enables rapid resorption of the inflammatory tissue exudates from the alveolar sacs back into circulation. This vasodilatation usually experiences some erythema and blushed appearance of the skin following the procedure. But this will recover back to normal skin tones within 20 minutes. There are two different ways to perform this hot salt massages. It's important to state that although it feels very hot at initial application, the discomfort is fleeting and quickly becomes tolerable. No burn injuries will result from this on the skin of the patients or on that of the masseur. If a carer or masseur is uncomfortable handling the hot towels, they may wear thermal gloves while performing this therapy.
Do not massage over clothing. The skin of the patient must be in direct contact with the hot salt solution in the towel to have the desired effect. I will follow through with these descriptions of the massage procedures as well as a description of an adjunctive effective method which involves immersion in a hot salt bath. The first method is to boil 500 ml of water in a kettle, add 100 grams of table salt and pour this into a plastic bowl and mix quickly. Dip the corner of a hand towel or cotton flannel into the hot salt water and immediately roll it into the dry part of the towel to make a damp steamy pad. Make sure it is not dripping wet. Open now the towel and quickly dab the skin of the chest and neck in brisk one second intervals. Do not leave the hot pad against the skin for more than one second per dab to prevent any burn injury developing. As the towel loses heat, reheat it by dipping, rolling and reapplying until all the areas of the body listed are treated and gone over two to three times. The process should take about five to 10 minutes to complete. The second method, place 500 ml of cold water in a clean plastic bowl. Add 100 grams of table salt to the water and mix. Soak three face towels into the solution and wring out the excess fluid from the towels. Put the damp salt towels into the microwave and heat for two to three minutes on high setting. Remove the steamy towels from the microwave and immediately commence the brisk massage. Change the towels as each cools down and reheat them in the microwave for a minute to reactivate the steamy effect. Massage all areas listed above for 5 to 10 minutes. I will now discuss the hot salt bath. Although the massage I've described achieves in most patients an immediate reopening of the airways and improvement in breathing, longer term resolution of the pulmonary symptoms can be achieved by following this through with a long 20 to 30 minute soak in a hot water and salt bath and massaging the chest and body while lying in the bath. Again, the salt to use here is sodium chloride. Do not use any other salts in its place as the hot water may result in scald injuries. Do not substitute it with bath salt mixtures containing magnesium sulfate and sodium bicarbonate. You may add a few drops of aromatic oils like eucalyptus oil or mint oils to enable more relief from this bath. I recommend this procedure is performed with assistance from another person for mixing the water and massaging the chest and back. The procedure is done in this way. You run a comfortable low warm bath of about 30 to 35 degrees centigrade to a mid calf level when sitting in the bath and add one to two kilograms of sodium chloride or household salt to the bath. Sit the individual in the bath and slowly run the hot tap gradually increasing the temperature of the salt bath. As the hot tap is running, gently mix and swirl the water around the individual to enable them adjust and tolerate the increasing temperature of the bath water. The temperature of the water can then be raised safely between 45 to 50 degrees centigrade as tolerated by the patient. Once the hot bath water is at mid chest level, recline the patient into the bath and massage the areas of the skin of the chest, abdomen and arms, neck and face for 10 minutes and advise them to lie in the water for 20 to 30 minutes. It is very common to feel drowsy and lightheaded while in the bath because of the steamy heat. After Words, exit the bath, dry off and lie down and rest. Any respiratory 
difficulty and breathlessness should have started subsiding and will continue to improve at this stage. This bath may then be repeated on a daily basis if symptoms recur. But in my experience, one bath usually is enough and may be repeated only one more time to resolve the symptoms. Massages can be repeated up to three times a day using the hot salt water in the towel to treat any recurring symptoms like sore throats, chest tightness, neck pain, and backache and tension around the chest and the airways. I have used this method in the past in relatives suffering from severe asthma and bronchitis to immediately relieve the respiratory distress where the administered bronchodilators and steroid inhalers were not working effectively. More recently, I successfully advised two patients diagnosed with COVID who were exhibiting respiratory distress and pneumonia. In both cases, the massages and baths were performed by their spouses under my visual direction using FaceTime and WhatsApp. Their breathing improved significantly and immediately in both of them. Later on, one of the patients was admitted in the accident and emergency for a booked assessment of their respiratory distress symptoms. And on admission, all clinical signs had returned to normal six hours following the bath they had had. All the blood gases, ECG, chest x-ray, and blood investigations were normal. And this led to a full discharge from the A&E within four hours with a puzzled admissions team wondering how their symptoms had resolved so quickly. I now want to recommend this as an adjunct to other therapies that are being used to treat the severe respiratory complications in patients in hospital and in the community as well, before it leads to fatality. This procedure will improve the breathing and reduce the fatal outcomes. Starting this procedure as soon as possible will be beneficial to the patient, will prevent worsening of their symptoms, re-establish their breathing abilities, and will eventually help them recover completely from the effects of COVID-19 infections. I thereby really recommend that this procedure is started as soon as possible in anybody who is suffering these symptoms. Thank you very much for listening.